What you're looking at in here is my main computer. Uh, the most recent hardware iteration in it was put together in Christmas of 2020, so less than a year ago. And this is what's in here. If you want to go and watch that video, I'll go ahead and I'll leave a link to that in the video description. But this year, I thought I was going to go ahead and upgrade the video card, because what it's got in it right now is just a lowly R9 380, so nothing particularly great. But as it turns out, video cards are frightfully expensive. Anything that would be a, you know, a significant upgrade from that is going to run me well over a thousand dollars. So, I decided to just go and purchase new hardware, since I had to go and Re I'm going to have to redo my Windows install anyway, since I'm using 8.1, and almost certainly there's no video card that's being manufactured these days that has a driver for Windows 8.1. They seem to be pushing you towards Windows 10 now. I'm going to have to downgrade this to Windows 10. I should redo the OS anyway. It's been through a couple of hardware iterations, and now it's, it's probably getting kind of tired. So I might as well redo it, get rid of some of the cruft that's on this, and... Uh, I can reuse this machine for, basically it's going to be used for VM work, because I think it'd be pretty good for that with the 8-core processor. But what we're going to do is, before we replace any hardware, I'm going to find a video in here. That's about seven minutes long, probably a good length to do this test, so I'm going to go in, we'll make a movie using our usual preset here, and we'll call it 3700 along with the name of the project, so that way I remember which one I actually used once I've got this all figured out. So we'll render that and see how long it takes. In the meantime, I guess we can take a look at some of the new hardware. I'm hopeful that it's all going to work together. Supposedly it's all compatible, but you never know sometimes with this stuff. So this is the RAM. I did get new RAM just because the CPU supports faster clock speeds on the RAM than what I originally had, so it's a modest increase. I think uh, it supports 3200 megahertz on its own. That's what it says. So we'll see how that goes. Plus, you know, I, I wanted some basically better RAM than what I had already. It was just some cheap junk back when I first put the computer together in 2018 and I cycled it down. Brand new NVMe SSD. Again, this is basically the only choice for a 250 gig and I wasn't going to go buy a 500 gig because those were a lot more expensive and I don't need 500 gigs for a boot drive. Here's a CPU. I've never actually seen one of these before. Uh, well, actually, I guess it's an APU because it's got the integrated graphics, the R7 5700G. So it's basically functionally equivalent to the chip I've already got in there. Uh, it's not unlocked, but I don't overclock, so I don't really care. Hopefully, everything will work, and it includes a heatsink fan. I was going to take the Wraith Prism that's on the existing system and put it on this, but I think that the cooler in this is probably a little bit small for that 3700X, so I think I'll just leave it alone. You can see here's the motherboard. Not what I would have gone with normally, but stock options were pretty limited. Uh, it was either buy this or spend an extra almost $70 on one that's got all these other fancy features from Asus that I don't need, including Wi-Fi. I'm not going to use Wi-Fi. So, this was basically the best option. It's not compatible with those chips. Hmm. It said that it was compatible with the 5700G. I guess we'll find out whether that's actually true. They need to do a BIOS update, which fortunately the QFlash Plus makes easy. So, don't even need to... I guess the system doesn't even really need to work. You just need to plug in a USB stick with the BIOS file on it, and it will automatically do it. So we'll get this open and get it ready to be set up. Hopefully it'll work out of the box. Okay, here's what you get. Of course, it comes with a badge that nobody's ever going to install. There's the manual. I'm surprised they give you a paper manual, and I'm even more surprised that they actually still give you a driver's CD because most people don't even have an optical drive anymore. I mean, I do, but most people don't. A couple of new SATA cables, those might come in handy for a project. Of course, we got the I.O. plates, which is all nice and fancy. 
Looks like it's, this thing even has a PS2 port, which is really nice. I don't have any PS2 port peripherals, but it'd be nice for testing anyway. Here is the board unpackaged. I wish they sold boards with more than four SATA plugs that were not full ATX, but it seems like they don't do that anymore. They expect you to use the NVMe. Nothing particularly fancy, but it's got enough features that uh, I shouldn't have a problem. I did need to buy a HDMI to DVI cable because my setup is going to have two DVI monitors. I don't have a monitor with HDMI yet, so... Ah, we'll live, I suppose. I'm going to get the CPU installed and also the RAM. Maybe I'll get out a power supply and give it a test. Make sure that it works. Might even install Windows before we even put it in the computer. Alright, before installing the CPU, I've installed the SSD. Which looks kind of out of place, being a blue PCB and all that on this motherboard. I wanted the WD Black because I thought it looked very nice, but they weren't in stock. I could have probably ordered one online, but why order online when you can just go to a store and buy it, quite frankly, and have it that same day and not have to pay for shipping? I'm not one of the, the folks that does all their shopping online or else. You know. I find it interesting they make you use Channel 2 first, rather than Channel 1. I'm not sure why they'd label it like that. It's kind of odd, but we'll follow the rules for maximum compatibility. Why not? Now I gotta get the CPU on there. Okay. Here is the CPU, or I guess the APU. I think it's the biggest chip that you can get from AMD that's got built in video. I mean, it's not a Threadripper, and it's not an R9 or anything like that, but I think anything bigger than this, like the 5800s and the 5900s and whatever, they don't have built in video, to the best of my knowledge. Maybe you can get some that do. But, uh, I think this is as big as it gets. It's all the tiny little pins on the back. And here's the cooler. It's a tiny cooler, but of course it only needs to dissipate 65 watts. Much better than the 125 that the Intel crap does. Hopefully that's the last time we have to see that marking for this build. If anything is going to go wrong, I bet it'll be that the BIOS is out of date, because there is a certain revision of BIOS. And it's pretty high that needs to be on this before this chip will actually work. It doesn't just work out of the box, in theory. But then again, this is brand new hardware, so it should work out of the box. But who knows what revision of BIOS is on this, because who knows how long it's been sitting around. Okay, this is strange. Uh, this is not a Wraith Stealth cooler, which is what it said it came with. Uh, if you remember my original build, well, maybe it is, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is the Wraith Spire Cooler, however, because uh, it's similar to the 2600 system I put together, and that was a Wraith Spire. So unless they're calling this the Stealth now, they gave me the wrong cooler, which means I had to actually remove the existing mounting harbor, because the Stealth just clips on. But, fortunately, that's easy enough to deal with. Hopefully it will actually screw straight into these. Okay, looks like it's upside down, but it's actually right side up. I didn't install it backwards this time like I did the other one. But uh, one tip for installing these, old, uh, not oversized, but uh, spring-loaded mount schoolers like this one. Uh, you can't really see that. The whole thing is black. Make sure that you use a screwdriver that fits the screw head snugly. Otherwise, you will slip and stab your motherboard. I haven't done that in a while, but uh, you won't like it when that happens. I can assure you of that. Are we ready for the grand fire-up? I have this spare DVI here for now. It's not going to be here forever because I, it's earmarked for a computer, but it will work for this quick little test, I suppose. Assuming the monitor is actually going to see it. I've just got a random keyboard and a random mouse. But, uh, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to hook up is a little PC speaker. So that way I could know if it was doing something. Saw a light for a second. So now I need to power it on. Here's the power switch right there. Let's see if it works.
So far, nothing. Not the most promising thing I've ever seen. No, so far, absolutely nothing. Isn't it nice when things don't work for no reason? Hey, we got saved by QFlash Plus. Yeah, you just push that little button and then wait, and it will do its thing. As long as you've got a FAT32 formatted USB stick plugged into that plug there, with the BIOS file, which is renamed to gigabyte.bin. Check it out. We actually have a BIOS setup screen now. I went ahead and I just updated to the latest BIOS that was available. So, F13 is the BIOS that adds support for the 5000 series Ryzen CPUs with graphics. I guess before that the ones with graphics don't work, which is odd. I don't know why that would cause a problem, but, you know, I don't really know how this stuff works yet. So, we're learning as we go. So, let's see, do we have advanced mode, which is what I would like, so I can take a look at some of this stuff. I want to come in here, I don't need to think I need to change any of the CPU settings, but I want the XMP, which will give me DDR2, DDR4-3200. I think, let me see. I actually, let me see, we go in here, I do need to turn on SVM mode, I almost forgot about that, that's your virtualization. And everything else should be pretty much normal. Secure virtual machine, I guess is what that stands for. Yeah, I don't think I need to worry about that. Or anything else that's in there. So... I'm going to set this up to my liking, and uh, then we'll try and boot Windows, and try and install Windows. Like I said, I think I'm going to have to go with Windows 10, and I might as well just go with Windows 10 anyway, just for the latest in driver compatibility. I don't know if 8.1 would even work on this, so that's what we'll do. In fact, the motherboard uh, downloads page didn't even have drivers for anything but Windows 10 anyway, so we'll just go for 10, even though it's a massive downgrade. Wow, that was fast. It was like less than two minutes. Gotta love modern hardware platforms and their speed. So I'm gonna have to set this up properly now. Ethernet not connected. So we'll deal with that. At least it sees the Ethernet. Important, you say? Let's see how important it really is. It's probably getting ready to send all of my personal information to the Pentagon or something. Okay, we're going to domain join instead, because I do not want a Microsoft account. Again, we're starting from scratch here. Guess I better put in a password and all that. Ah yes, here we go. No. No. We'll send required for now, but we're going to turn that off entirely later. No. 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 There. Hello, my friend. Let's see if all the drivers are installed as they should be. It might take several minutes. Well, let's see if it takes several minutes. I don't have an LED, so I can't see disk access, but that's fine. I don't really need to see disk access anyway. How much power is this using? Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, it says zero watts, which I don't believe for half a second, but... Oh, 
Went up to four. Ooh. It's gotta be using something off the wall, so I don't know why that's reading zero, but sure. Whatever, we'll take it at face value. I thought this would be rather quick. Well, there it goes. It didn't take several minutes. Searching for display driver. And yeah, now I gotta do all that nonsense. Okay, I think it's pretty much ready to go. Set up how I would like it to be set up compared to this thing. That, by the way, is how long it took to render that video. Hair under 11 minutes to render a video that's a hair over 7 minutes. So, not real time, but, you know, decent. Decently acceptable. So now I can shut this down and uh, transfer the hardware. I think I've got most of the programs that I use on a regular basis moved over. But we can figure everything else out on a case-by-case -case basis. Here it is. The old rig. It's not even old. It feels kind of weird to be calling it old, but... I guess it technically is old now. So I'm going to have to disconnect all the cabling. I just realized that I'm not going to have slot blanks. Words removed. New I.O. plates installed. Go ahead and put the slot covers in. It's funny, I've modified this case so that I could put a uber long video card in it. Now I'm not going to have a video card in it at all. Funny how that works. Okay, there it is. Everything is installed now. I hope. I don't think I'm missing anything. There's actually two fan headers on this motherboard, so now I can plug in both of my fans to the board. Should have taken this thing out and blown the dirt out. Probably would have been a smart idea. But it's getting kind of late, so maybe we'll do it later. Okay. Cover is on. Focus is not working. There we go. Let's see if it works. Hit the switch. I get the lights. Plug that in correctly, looks like. I do want to go into setup. Oh, that much works. Like I said, I wanted to go into setup. Just so I could take a peek at what was going on in here with respect to drives. That's what I was interested in. You know, I don't even think I looked at a whole lot of this stuff. It wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, how do I get back out to that? So, I'm going to go back in and make sure everything is set right, and then we'll deal with everything else. Okay, I think the computer is pretty much up and running now. Uh, we'll just have to deal with things on a case-by-case -case basis. But, uh, I think everything I need to make the system work satisfactorily at this point is able and working. So, we're going to try this. I think I may need to update my version of Vegas because this is a very old version. So who knows if it's actually going to support this hardware. Now obviously I'm going to have to reset all this stuff because it's going to be in entirely the wrong place. Let's see if it recognizes any of my render templates. It looks like it does. I believe these two were set before so we'll set them again. But this is the one that I want. We'll have to go and move them to e-export. And we'll set that to 5700. I'm going to run some checks here. Check GPU. OpenCL available. Okay, it actually will work with that. Now, whether or not OpenCL will actually help remains to be seen. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see here that it's still using, or it was using, a fair bit of the GP, or the CPU rather than the GPU. But you can't actually see how much of the GPU it's using. So that's neat. Like the only nice thing about Windows 10. So this should be just about done. And there's your end result. 
think we shaved about a minute off of that. So it's still not real time. Again, I think I may need to replace or upgrade this version to Vegas to a newer version that can maybe take better advantage of the GPU rendering. Or it could just be that the render template that I'm using, which was, seems to be the better one to use, just doesn't take advantage of this hardware. I don't know. Maybe I'll try the Windows Media Encoding, but I didn't have much luck with that either, so... I suppose not, and I guess that's probably going to conclude this video, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. I was thinking about putting that in this video, that upgrade, but I don't think I'm going to. Just because that's something different. So, stay tuned for more upgrades, I guess.